so we all know how my seven day water fast attempt went. It didn't go at all. So I am happy to report that it is now the end of my five day water. Wait, I didn't do no water fast. I did a fat fast, so. I'm happy to report it is now the end of my seven day water fast. And guess what? Nigga, we made it. Hey. We made it. Nigga, we made it. Hey. Damn, we made it. I was actually successful in completing it this time. And honestly, I completed it without any hitches. Like, it was very easy to do. So, let me just explain exactly what a fat fast is. But before I do that, y'all motherfuckers better listen up. Because I know y'all gonna look at these pictures, you're gonna look at my scale, and you're gonna be like, oh, I wanna do that. But first and foremost, I, I really need you to understand that this is not for a long-term eating plan, and you definitely shouldn't do it to lose weight. Now, what you should be using it for or if you're trying to get into ketosis, maybe you're just starting, you had a cheat meal, or you knocked yourself out of ketosis somehow, you can definitely do a three to five day fat fast in order to get yourself back in. Or if you maybe plateaued on keto, you're not seeing any results, or they've slowed down, you can do a three to five day fat fast in order to maybe jumpstart or speed up your results. Those are the only two reasons why I'm going to suggest for anybody to do this. Now, once again, y'all gonna do what the hell y'all wanna do, but don't say I didn't warn your ass. So a fat fast is going to be a three to five day fast where you're consuming 800 to 1,000 calories per day. And of that 800 to 1,000 calories, 90% of it should be fat. Hence, it's called a fat fast. So you're really not intaking any carbs, you're not taking any protein, not really intaking any real nutrients, vitamins. So if you want to take multivitamins or any vitamins that you're already taking, I didn't take any, but you can do that if you need to. But yeah, you're just basically eating a lot of fat. And I'm not saying the bad fat, so coconut oil, grass-fed butter, unsalted butter, nut butter, almonds, seeds avocados of course well, healthy fats you want to think healthy fats not fast food fat during my fat fast I decided to do it the easiest route which is just consume liquids for the majority and that would have been my keto coffee most people use butter and an MCT oil or a coconut oil which is MCT oil when it comes to liquid I honestly did not drink a gallon of water in total liquid which included my coffee i probably had about 100 ounces per day so basically you want to just make sure you drink enough water to keep your thirst satisfied if you want to drink a gallon you can definitely do that and if you don't that's okay but just as long as you're not thirsty if i started on tuesday so tuesday wednesday and thursday i only had a keto coffee by day four i had one keto coffee but i also incorporated some peanut butter and guacamole on day five i had my keto coffee and then i also had an egg and cheese omelet with two tablespoons of butter last month in december i did a lot of experimenting with my body and a lot of researching and what i found is that my body has a negative response to sugar and going back to years and years ago before I started my fitness journey, I was 282 pounds, uh, high blood pressure, triglyceride levels and cholesterol levels were off the chain. But the main thing that I wish I would have looked more into is that I was pre-diabetic. And my doctor just told me that I needed to lose weight. And honestly, my doctor never pushed a healthier diet on me. They actually wanted me to get a bariatric surgery done for weight loss, which I was totally against. And not saying there's anything wrong with weight loss surgery, but I just knew that I could lose the weight on my own. Um, 
So when I initially changed my diet, I just did 1200 calories because my doctor said eat a low calorie diet and eat 1200 calories. I did that, I burned out. Once I burned out on 1200 calorie diet, I went to um, South Beach style of eating and I stayed in phase one. So if any of you know about South Beach diet or have done it, phase one, you don't have any fruit which means you have a lower sugar intake and I had a lot of success doing that because I didn't have any sugar so fast forward over the years I've been up and down up and down with my weight loss and how my body fluctuate and at the end of the day what I realized is that sugar is my enemy so what I did is I experimented one the last week of 2017 and I was like you know if I'm gonna do this keto thing and I'm gonna do it right I'm gonna be all in let me get all of my little urges out now what I would say is that I don't really binge a lot not like I used to like I used to binge like let me tell you I used to binge I would cook food at home then I wouldn't satisfy so I would go to like McDonald's get some chicken nuggets a double cheeseburgers some french fries then I would see Taco Bell I would stock at Taco Bell get some tacos and then I look and I got all this food and I'm like shit well I'm already eating I might as well keep eating then I go to the store get some chips and candy and by the end of the day who knows I could have had about five or six thousand calories worth of food I've eaten in one sitting from binging but now my binges aren't like that anymore because I don't consume a lot of calories I consume a lot of sugar I like candy I like cookies I like chips crackers so when you think about sugar it's not just thinking about sugar it's really thinking about carbs too because carbs break down into glucose and glucose is stored sugar so you have to really be careful with not only the sugar intake but the carb intake so as of now I'm not technically pre-diabetic but my insulin resistance is still there it's still very sensitive so when I eat sugar I notice I have a very adverse reaction when you're dealing with PCOS pre-diabetes type 2 diabetes a lot of that has to do with your insulin levels your insulin levels are the reason why you're having a problem losing weight so if you start to take the sugar out of your diet take the unnecessary carbs out of your diet you're going to have a better response to your overall eating versus eating what you may think is healthy and is probably not that healthy because it has too many carbs and too many sugars for your body the reason I did this fat fast was to get myself into ketosis. It can take up to two weeks for your body to adapt, longer for some people, but doing a fat fast will actually accelerate that process. So this is a keto stick, and you wanna move your keto stick from the negative end down to the large or median end in the purple. That indicates that you're in ketosis. It uses your urine to measure if you are producing additional ketones. Ketones are the byproduct of fat burning. The only way to get into ketosis is to deplete your body of its glycogen stores and switch from fueling on carbs to fueling on fat. It took me three days to get fully into ketosis and I did that by following the fat fat and doing 30 to 60 minutes of cardio. I only did that three of the five days and I did treadmill sprints or the Stairmaster. Now you don't have to fat fast in order to get into ketosis. Simply cut your carbs keep a moderate protein amount and increase healthy fats along with doing compound lifting moves like deadlifts and squats and also some interval hit style training. So I am definitely happy I did this fast and it has basically helped me get motivated to keep going forward in my journey. I'm looking to lose about five pounds in this coming week and I'm pretty sure I still have some water weight that I need to lose so it's going to be easier for me to drop that five pounds because some of that is going to encompass the water weight that I'm shedding and probably around week three or week four it should become a little slower with the losses on the scale but my losses in my body will definitely be there and this is what I want to let you guys know don't always rely on the scale because you need to look at your body your clothes 
pictures, how you're feeling, how your skin is looking, maybe your hair and nails are growing. There are going to be different things that you can use to measure your success. It's not one-sided. It's not just I'm getting success on the scale because you could drop 10 pounds and not have a single change in your body. I mean, no shade to anybody posting videos here, but I've watched a lot of people doing this fat fast and they're like, oh, I lost this amount of weight but they don't show any pictures, they don't show how their body changed, no scale photo, and it's like really hard for me to believe that you did what you said you did and there's no visual proof of it. And even if you did lose whatever amount of weight you lost doing that fast, like how did it reflect in your body? If it's not reflecting anywhere on your body that you lost X amount of pounds doing this fast, then I mean, to me, the video's a wash. That's just my opinion. So that's it for the first week of 2018. Very successful for me and I'm definitely looking forward to next week. But until then, click the subscribe button down below and also make sure you click on the bell notification. That way you'll get updates anytime that I'm posting videos so you won't miss out on my awesome vlog. Also tips and motivation that can help you with losing weight along your journey as well. Alright, so till next time, I'll see you guys.